Good July! Uh, welcome to According to Pete. Thanks for coming over and hanging out. Today we're going to talk about LEDs and how much we love them. Um, now, uh, LEDs are pretty easy to work with, right? We drop them on a board, they're an indicator, yada, yada, yada. But I want to look at it a little more from the perspective of a design engineer. So um, we're going to talk about band gap, we're going to talk about uh, colors, and how they come about those. We're going to talk about power dissipation. We're going to talk about lumens and candela, right? All the things that you look at the specs and go, oh, huh, I wonder what that's all about. Well, we're going to look at what that's all about a little bit today. So let's go. Okay. So first we're going to talk about band gap and its relation to color. Now what I have drawn here is a PN junction, assume it to be an LED. Um, now, in its static position, you've got no, no voltage applied to this thing. You've got electrons hanging out over on the inside, and apparently my red marker is starting to give out. And you've got holes hanging out over here on the P side, and they're all kind of in the valence band of the material, right? And in order to get anything to hop over that junction, you have to apply the field, okay? How much do you have to apply? Well, it's different for different materials. So, if we assume that you apply voltage and eventually you get enough voltage across this sucker that these electrons can bump themselves up to the conduction band from the valence band, okay? So they're hopping over and they go over across the junction and then they fall back and recombine with a hole. Ah! And then in doing so, they release a photon, which a uh, universal symbol for a photon is apparently a circle. Um, now the energy of that photon directly corresponds to the amount of energy it took to bump those suckers up to get them across the junction, okay? So that's the significance of <laughs> that is the significance of band gap, set it right. Um, and the light, the color that it makes is, 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 is that energy basically. And I'll draw you a chart. All right, so what I have, uh, written down here is a, a matrix of colors versus a band gap and electron volts, okay? Um, red at 680 nanometer wavelength, 1.8 electron volt. Orange at 2.0, yellow at 2.1, green at 2.3, blue at 2.6. Now again, these are electron volts, which don't directly correspond to voltage, but it's close, right? Um, these are, if you were to just put V, that would be a really close representation. Um, in practice, when you look at the data sheets, of course, uh, you'll see V forward anywhere between two and three volts ranging from red to blue, okay? But this is how the correspondence goes for color versus band gap energy. Okay, so if you haven't been to college, now you know what band gap is and you can talk intelligently about it. Um, now the materials, I don't have the materials listed that produce these colors, uh, and that's why I'm holding my notes, uh, but they uh, made up of various concoctions of silicon, germanium, gallium, aluminum, phosphorus, arsenic, and probably bunches of other things that I don't know about. Um, but this illustrates the relationship between energy it takes to get something across the junction and color that it actually produces. Now, the one I don't have up here is white. Why isn't white up here? Okay, we're gonna talk about that next. In the case of a white LED, there is not a material that's dumping out white photons. There are no white photons. Forget about that action. Um, what a white LED actually is, is a blue LED. And what they do is they put a phosphor, right? This is the, 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 the substrate that the LED is mounted upon, and this is your LED. What they do, is they will put a phosphor coating around the emitter of the LED. Now, this phosphor coating absorbs blue light and f fluoresces, that's the word I want, fluoresces yellow. And the combination of blue plus yellow equals gr white. I don't know. Um, well, okay, uh, I, I surmise, and we'll get into this, why green seems to have a lot to do with white light for our eyes. We'll get into that. But that's how they make a white LED, is that it's a blue LED, they put the phosphor around it, and it shows up white, okay? Um, 
yeah, that's all I have to say about that. There are a few things as an electrical engineer that when I jumped into looking at LEDs and the optics and all of the numbers and calculations, there are a number of things that I looked at and went, this is totally bunk, right? How they're doing this stuff. Um, and color temperature, which is what we're gonna talk about, is one of them. Um, now I will concede that for my position uh, in lighting, this is esoteric information. Um, but for others, this could be critical. So let me describe it, you can make your own call. Now color temperature, the, the coolest thing about it is the, the way it's defined. It is defined as the temperature of a black body that radiates the color that you want in degrees Kelvin. So for example, um, if I've got you know an opaque dark mass that I heat up until it bleeds cherry red, I measure that temperature and that is its color temperature in degrees Kelvin. Now, the thing I don't like about this is the way they desc it, it's described, um, right? So this is the plot of color temperature. And up here, you've got uh, green, oh, my red, my red marker's going out. Uh, down here, you've got blue and violet. Uh, and over here, you've got, you know, red, okay? That's weird by itself. But then the, the, the color temperature representations follow lines, right? And every one of these lines is gonna be a specific color temperature, but it spans a range of colors. For my applications, I probably can't use that. Um, I can see in places where it is, necessary, I'm probably not going to go for this one, um, but you may, you might be one of those. Um, now the things you need to know about color temp, if you're looking at it on a data sheet, is that high color temperatures result in hues that are more steered towards the blue, and lower color temperatures are more steered towards the red, which shouldn't be a surprise, right? I mean, we look in the sky and we see stars and we know from watching many episodes of Nova that you know the red stars are cooler and the blue stars are hotter. So there's no surprise there. Um, but this particular one, I'm not a big believer in the devil. <laughs> there's some evil in this chart, man. Um, so that's color temperature. Now you've got at least an idea of what that's all about. Okay, now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about luminous power. How much light is it? Well, okay, so if you look at a data sheet for an LED, any given LED, you're gonna see measurements of light output and you're gonna see uh, a couple that we'll talk about. And the first is Candela. And yes, it was not named for Bob Candela who invented the, no, 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 no. Uh, it is historically uh, the light emitted by a single candle, okay? Um, it is an SI unit, and if you read the definition on uh, Wikipedia, what you get is luminous power per unit solid angle emitted by a point light source in a particular direction. Okay, what is a solid angle? Well, if this is you and you're looking, and this is me after I read about solid angles. And you see my fat, crazy head that much? That's the solid angle. It's the angle that the solid takes up in your field of view, in a nutshell. Now, solid angles are, our solid angles are related, they're expressed in terms of steradians. What's a steradian? A steradian is, okay, um, a radian is to a circle what a steradian is to a sphere, okay? So if you've got a circle, and there's your radius, you know, and there's, there's, there's one radian, there's two pi radians around a circle. Well, if it's a sphere, I cannot draw a sphere with a green dry erase marker, but, Assuming this is a sphere all of a sudden, the steradian is actually a cone that emanates out from there. 
and there are four pi steradians in a sphere. Okay, now you probably don't need to know all that, but we're gonna dig into the equation for candela to see what exactly it is. Um, and so it's expressed in these terms and you kind of need to know a little bit of that, a little extra background, can't hurt you. All right, so let's have a look at the equation. So if we look at the equation, right, the last question was, uh, what is a candela? What does it actually mean? Okay, so this is the equation for calculating uh, candelas. Let me try to explain this. Um, IV as a function of lambda, function of wavelength, okay? So this is our candela as a function of wavelength. The terms that go into this will start, can I move over here? I just did. We're gonna start over here with this guy. This is your luminous radiance and it is measured in watts per steradian. Okay, <sighs> watts. There's, there's a unit I'm comfy with. That makes me happy. Steradians, I've learned about steradians. Okay, so that much space, that much light, that much heat. I get it, right? Now, the other thing, other things it's multiplied by to get candela, first is called the photopic luminosity function. So this is a scalar that looks like this. And what this is, is the human eye response to light. And as you see, it peaks around 555 nanometer. That's green, okay? So this, the candela equation takes into consideration the response of your eye. That's right off the top, and that's good. Then there's this third term. Can I swap to the other side now? I'm gonna swap to the other side now. This third term, okay, history about it. I didn't go too deep because I don't, think I need to go too deeply, but in 1979, there was a redefinition of the term candela. And this guy was added so that the old calculations and the new calculations exactly matched. What drives me nuts about this is that it is 6, 683.002 lumen. What's a lumen? Okay, we're gonna talk about lumens next, but lumen is something that's actually derived from candela. You're on thin ice light, people. Why? Okay, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. What I'm here to do is tell you <laughs> what, what the candela actually looks like. Um, and I want you to think of it in terms of watts per steradian as applied to the photopic light function, luminosity function, okay? And that makes a candela. Um, now let's talk about lumens. Uh, and, and as I talk about it, I'm gonna tell you about some of the difficulty that I had absorbing the definition for lumen. We'll get to it in a sec. All right, so let's define a lumen. Um, as I said earlier, it is derived from a candela. Um, in, in, in a nutshell, what it is, is your candela times the angle in steradians that you're actually emitting light. Um, and if you break it down, that's exactly what it is. This is your candelas, your I sub V. This is your angle of projection in um, steradians. And that is your lumen value, just spits it out. Now, in my time of trying to decipher all of this junk, what I kept trying to do was in, in my head, right? It's apparently totally wrong. I still haven't reconciled it completely. But um, if you've got a light source and it's putting light out, what I kept expecting a lumen to be is like when you lens that light and it compresses, now, now you've got your lumens, right? In that compressed field. But it looks like from this equation, what a lumen is, you get the same light source, what you've actually got is something like that. Like you're shielding the extra. That's how I read it. If I've got this wrong, somebody pipe up. Um, and in fact, I'll go a step further. I'll go back and um, if I've misunderstood the units in that candela equation, pipe up because I swear to God that that one item looks like lumens over watts lumens. Really? Come on. I must have this wrong. Um, 
So this is a lumen. Now, I want to give you some examples. Some of the LEDs that we sell uh, on the site, uh, one of the RGBs, right, uh, they have different luminosity ratings for the same amount of current. And that's probably everything to do with that photopic uh, light function, uh, lumin luminosity function, that's what it is. So for the RGB, one of the RGBs that I'm looking at was an eight millimeter that we sell at 20, mils, uh, 20 milliamps draw per, um, per junction. The red is giving off, or it's rated for in the data sheet, 800 millicandle. The blue is rated for 900 millicandle, and the green is rated for 4,000 millicandle. That's definitely that photopic luminosity function at work there. Now, contrast uh, the APA 102 2020, which we'll talk about a little more uh, in a bit. Uh, drawing 25 milliamps a piece, the red is giving out. 330 millicandle, the green is giving out 460, the blue is giving out 180. So you can still see that. For the same current draw, you get less light that you're seeing, and that's almost certainly got everything to do, or at least partially to do, with that bell curve that your eye responds to. Okay, now we're gonna shift gears again. Let's talk about power. Now, I will grant you that in most situations, you're not gonna have to deal with this. You're not even gonna have to think about it, right? Because if you follow, uh, right, most of us are just using LEDs as an indicator, something low power, and if you follow a couple of rules of thumb, you're golden. You're never gonna have to worry about it, okay? But, and if you suit suitably derate, okay, y'all know what I mean by derate? Hopefully all of you know, but uh, uh, if a part is rated for half a watt, don't rate it higher, or don't use it higher than half of that, right? Then you're good, you got no problems. And in most cases, that's gonna be exactly what happens. Now, in terms of high power LEDs, I have an example uh, how heat can bite you. Now, about a year and a half ago, some time ago, I installed uh, high power LEDs under my kitchen counters or under my cabinets, right? And I was like, you know what? I want to get long life out of these. I never want to have to worry about them. I'm going to run them at half power, right? They're rated up to 700 milliamps. I'm running them at 350 or a little less even. And I'm thinking like, that should be fine. And so you turn these things on and they're hot, but you can touch them, right? And that's okay. Well, after a year and a half, 25 LEDs, I, uh, three have failed. And they fail in a really weird way. They start blinking. Right? And then the whole string starts blinking, and then you have to sort out which one is broken. Um, but my point is, heat can get you. Even if you derate by half, it can get you. Those things were not very hot, and after a year, they pretty much gave up. So you have to pay attention to that. Now, in most of the situations that we're going to be talking about, probably, the vast majority of you are going to be using low power LEDs to blink some stuff, right? Okay, so let's think about that, that case for a moment. If you've got a PCB and you wanna put an LED on it, right? You got five volts or 3.3 volts, you got your standard red LED, and you put a 330 ohm resistor in there to limit the current, and your current is limited to a few milliamps, right? That part is rated up to 20 or 25 generally. Um, but you run it low because it doesn't have to be that high, right? It doesn't have to be that bright. We're all mole people. We live in the shadows and we go nah, at the sun. So you don't need that much light of an LED. Um, but one LED, only it, it can only communicate so much to the outside world. So you might start thinking about, oh, I can use an RGB, right? Well, okay, if you've got your standard RGB, which is not addressable, but you've got your standard like five millimeter epoxy capsule, red, green, blue that you have to drive, uh, that takes three pins out of your microcontroller and a whole bunch of code to PWM, which eh, could or could not be a problem. But three pins, okay. And again, this is gonna be, uh, you're gonna put uh, resistors in line with these things to limit the power. Okay, no problem there. Um, and this gives you a lot more ability to communicate. Now you can communicate colors, right? You, different colors can have different meanings and all, and you still only have a single component on your board. So that's pretty cool. Um, but if you wanna use fewer lines, you can go to an addressable. That's pretty cool, right? Okay, so 
Here's the thing about addressables. Um, they don't take an inline resistor to limit the current. You limit it through the software. Um, now, for something like, uh, in fact, a, a WS2812Bs, uh, the APA102s, and the APA102 2020s, those are the ones I'm really focused on. And the reason is because, um, I mean, it's a, it's a simple component. It's really tight, but it's capable. If you've, you're powering this thing with five volts, and each of those junctions, if you crank them up, can drop, according to the data sheet, 25 milliamps a piece. So at five volts, that's like three and a quarter watts. Out of this tiny, oh, not three and a quarter, sorry. <laughs> 375 milliwatts. Glad I caught that one. Now, if you compare the mass of even a standard quarter watt resistor to the mass of one of these APA 102 2020s, and you're like, okay, quarter watt, and, and the 2020s are rated for half a watt. That's a lot, and they're tiny, okay? And we'll show you a little picture of it in a sec to compare. But um, there's a lot of power that can be dissipated in that tiny little package. And I'm not saying it's impossible, but what I'm saying is that sucker's gonna get hot. And junction temperature over time will kill your LED, can burn your board, yada, yada, yada. So it's something to think about. And I have a little demo to show you what I'm talking about. Now, I don't have, I don't have like uh, 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 an eight by eight matrix, right? If you think about these 2020s and you put them on an eight by eight matrix, that's in about a one inch square, there's 64 of those things dropping 375 mil, that's like 24 watts out of a tiny little board like that. That sucker's gonna burn. So you need to be aware of the power in your hands and how you're using it, okay? And that's really my only point here. For most cases, you're not gonna have to worry about it, but if it starts feeling warm to the touch, you should probably think about it over the longer course of time, okay? Now let me show you the example. Okay, so let me talk this through. What we've got is uh, a Luminati uh, 3x3 matrix that has the APA 102Cs, the bigger ones, not the 2020s, the bigger ones. There's nine of these LEDs on this board that is a little bigger than one by one inch, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank it up and I'm gonna measure the temperature. And we're gonna see what it does. Um, now, numbers that we can expect, um, if every one of these junctions is on full, it draws 25 milliamps. So that is like 600, I, I calculated it, I've already forgotten. It's like more than 600 milliamps and it will drop like 3.3 watts if everything's on, okay? Now things that are working against me, uh, I'm using fast LED and it's operating off of their color palette. So I'm like 99% sure that I don't have my red, green, and blue on equally. I have white at full brightness. So it's gonna be a little bit less, um, but we're gonna see how hot it gets, right? Let's do it. Okay, now I think we've reached something like uh, thermal equilibrium. Uh, our supply is five volts. We are drawing about 400 milliamp. And uh, what we've got on the back of the board and these are degrees Celsius. It jumps around a little bit, but we're into the 60s, close to 65 at the top, 68, 69, and around the front, just burying it in there, 73, 72, 77. So it's up there, okay? Now, 80 degrees Celsius is like 176 Fahrenheit. Um, and we were dropping, you know, 400 milliamps, five volts, dropping two watts on this board, and we are at 176, approaching 176 degrees. Um, that's warm. Now, uh, again, this isn't maxed out. I'm using the color palette, I'm sure. You know, at 400 milliamps, we're not drawing the max. This is just white, as according to Fast LED. Now, if you transpose that, even in this case, um, you know, 7.1 being the factor of LEDs, if you had an 8x8 matrix on that board, would take you up to over 14 watts, okay, <laughs> on that tiny little one by one board. So 
it's gonna burn. It's gonna be real hot. Um, now, in the defense of the manufacturer, they did put a little note in the data sheet that says, hey, these can get warm. You should know about it. You should take it into consideration. So they know what they're handing people. Um, my only point there is that if you're gonna use these things and you're gonna pack them in tight, know how much power this is capable of before you start writing numbers to it because it can bite you in the butt. Things that I would be, consider, uh, I would be concerned with if I was uh, designing circuits with, you know, mucho LEDs. Um, if you're just doing like simple indicators, uh, you know, single package LEDs in an 0603 service mount or even one of the, one of the epoxy ones, um, stick to the rule of thumbs, you're golden. Don't worry about it. Um, your, 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 your drops are still going to be between 2 and 3 volts for any of the colors. Um, you might have to balance the color output with resistors and that's going to be hit or miss. It's going to be trial and error. Um, there is a lot of subjectivity at the root of perception of light intensity and color. And so if you need to get real specific, it's going to be an iterative process for you. Or at least I believe it would be an iterative process for me because uh, I only see the ratings of candela and lumen and even power as relative. And, and adjustable. So, so for colors, you're gonna have to pick something and try it out, see how you like it. For light output, you know, in the hundreds of millicandela, uh, we're talking small, small LEDs, thousands are brighter, uh, and lumens in the hundreds tend to be brighter, high power LEDs. That's my experience. But still, that knowledge isn't going to prevent you from having to iterate. Get a few, try them out, see what you think. Um, and then in terms of power, uh, I would definitely consider, I would be looking at the data sheet saying, okay, well, how much relative output am I looking at? I would be comparing different data sheets for different parts. How much power, how much light does this give me versus how much power it's going to dissipate and what do I have to source it with? Um, I don't see this getting away from an iterative process. Uh, but again, if you're only doing little indicator LEDs or color strip of uh, addressables, you're probably golden. You probably don't have to worry about it too much. I think that's everything I got to tell you about LEDs. So if you have any questions, if I've missed anything, and I genuinely hope somebody says, Pete, that Candela equation, you've jacked it up. Man, tell me, because that thing looks wrong. Um, so let me know. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments below. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.